This is the Sculptor 078S, a stepless version of the new Time Mall grinders that have caused a storm with their massive Kickstarter campaign, and I'm going to put it through its paces for espresso. Full disclosure, Timor sent me this final version of their grinder for review, but I'm not being paid and they don't know what I'm going to say other than the questions and clarifications that I've asked them. First, I want to talk about where the sculptor shines brightest, which is in build and workflow. It's one unibody piece of metal, sleek corners, and really just an outstanding build. Everything feels well made. Like, you know sometimes when you get something new and you feel some part of it and you're like, now that's the first thing that's going to break. I don't get that feeling from anything on this grinder, and I've got to commend Time More on recognizing and addressing common complaints with mid-tier home grinders and reducing parts that easily get damaged or wear over time. This side bun feels nice and soft clicky like ugh, and the lid snaps into place like oof, and that clicky knocker is just like noise. Those clicky, snappy parts aren't just window dressing. They're a core part of the experience that makes your morning coffee a nicer part of your day. I'm a firm believer that if something is part of your everyday routine, then how satisfying it is to use is important. I'm not saying this is perfect though, and there's just one part of this that isn't right for me. Others may disagree, but I'm not a fan of the rotary knocker. It's a novel solution for grind retention, and it's definitely a more elegant idea than the bellows that have become pretty ubiquitous in other home grinders. I just find that this motion is not comfortable for me. As any barista will tell you, twisting motions are where you get your injuries, and I feel like I have to click it just a few too many times. If it was just a one or two click thing, then it would be amazing, but it's never been that for me, with either dark or light roasts, with an RDT spray or not. I've always needed a good seven or eight clicks to get the majority of the grinds out, so I've taken to just doing a good brrrr whenever I use it. But it does work though, retention with it is very, very low. The cup feels great, it's a medium weight metal, but I did notice it got a bit staticky at the bottom and I usually give it a tap or two to get those runaway grinds out. It slides nicely into place on this plus button with magnets, which is super satisfying, and I've never really had any issues with grinds spilling out on my table, which is great because nobody likes cleaning that up. The hopper is small and it fits maybe around 30 grams maximum. I have to say I love, love, love these magnets on the top as well. It makes the workflow on this grinder so much smoother and less prone to errors. I think this should just be standard with all coffee grinders from now on magnets. The dial for adjusting the grind size is on the front face. It's a bold choice and I think it looks great and moves very easily with just the right amount of give. For espresso, I'm generally using the range of around 0.6 up to around 1.6 or 1.8. The overall range can be adjusted with a pin on the inside, but the default setting that it's shipped with, I haven't really approached the zero point, which conveniently locks on this grinder to stop you from touching the grinder burrs together. However, for me, this is still quite a narrow feeling range for adjusting, as it's only a few centimeters on the dial here. It's just a little less than ideal trying to find the perfect spot again if you're like me and you're constantly switching between beans, and especially using lighter roast espresso which has a narrower happy zone. Looking inside we have those sensory brushless motors that are a pretty neat technology that reduces wear on the parts and runs a little quieter than most other grinders. My testing showed it to max out at around 71 decibels on the highest speed, so not quiet by any means, but much quieter than other grinders I've tested. Hopefully this should last a long time as well. I'm not a filter guy, I'm an espresso guy, and I've probably put around 8 to 10 kilos of coffee through this grinder in the past few weeks that I've had it, trying light roasts and dark roasts on both my Nuri Lever L-Type, which I will have a final review on very soon, and the budget Oscar II using both stock and precision baskets. So for espresso, I want to get a little bit nerdy and explain my understanding of taste profiles from different burr sets and what I've noticed in my testing. The burrs in this coffee grinder, in my opinion and experience, produce a high than average texture, but quite a bit lower clarity espresso than most flat burr grinders I've used and tested. I don't want to go into the difference between flat and conical burr grinders because I'll do that in another video, but in short, if your grinder gives you lots of coarse and fines either side of your ideal dialed in setting, you'll get more texture, more juiciness, but at the cost of a clear and expressive coffee. Conical burr grinders tend to do this kind of shot, and I personally prefer a crisp, bright, an acidic espresso with more of that apple-like sharpness, so I usually opt for a flat burr grinder. And honestly, I found that with the Sculptor burrs, they actually produce more texture 
and juiciness, but less clarity than any other flat burr grinders I've tried. A little bit more like a conical burr than I expected. Now this doesn't mean that this grinder is bad. This is a preference, and I'm trying to make this part really clear because a lot of people might be wondering if this is the perfect grinder for them. And it all depends on what meets your preference. And there's no such thing as a perfect grinder. There will always be trade-offs. If you like the texture and mouthfeel of a thick, juicy espresso, then you'll want to go for grinders that produce more of a bimodal distribution, with some fines and some courses. If you like sweetness and clarity like me, you'll want to go for a more uni modal distribution. In general, this is why I'm not a fan of the Niche Zero. Not because it doesn't make great shots, but it doesn't make shots that I like, although there are tons of people out there who love it. So bear this in mind when you're looking at this grinder. It's not for everyone, but it does make a very interesting middle ground between a thick textured shot and a clean and crisp shot, although it's leaning a little bit more towards texture. Now, this difference in distribution gets dialed up to the max when you turn up the variable grinding speed, and that's where my biggest problems with this grinder started. Now I've only used a few variable speed grinders, and my first thought on this one is that it's a bit weird that the dial is on the back, so you can't see what setting you have it to. Couldn't it have just gone here on the side, and then had the on button around the back where it doesn't really need to be seen? Something important about variable grind speed is that it isn't just a case of grinding faster or slower, and different speeds with different beans are going to produce radically different coffees. And you'll generally need to grind finer the faster your speed is set to, to get the same timing for espresso. Faster grinding leads to more friction, more static, and more uneven grind size, but you know, it's faster. Like I said in the previous section, this might be good for the kinds of shots that you like, but I have not had a good time with my espresso on maximum speed on this grinder. No matter how much finer I grind, I get channeling and sputtering. I thought this might just be me, I checked the burr alignment to make sure, and I found that I got a much better shot on 800 RPM than the 1400 RPM at the max setting. In my studies and inquiry into this curious case, I decided to sift out the grinds and see how much variation I got. I'm using the Kruv sifter with the 300 micron and the 500 micron filters, and trying with both a lighter roast and a darker full city roast to demonstrate what's going on. So you can see that even when I grind finer, I'm actually ending up getting a larger number of coarse particles and a larger number of fines. The difference in size between 300 microns and bigger than 500 microns is not small, that's a pretty big difference. Overall, I was able to replicate this issue just about every time. It's a characteristic of the grinder that I got. This kind of forced me to use the slowest, or at least slower grind settings for espresso, since I don't want to have to clean up coffee spray on my bench. I would love to hear if there are any workarounds or explanations that anyone can offer offer that I can try, but as always with my reviews, I'm coming at this from the perspective of an enthusiast, and as I always say, a product you buy should work without you having to figure out some obscure specialist solution with 3D printed declumpers and tools that only professionals have. So in just my opinion, this isn't the be-all and end-all home grinder. It can certainly make a nice espresso for people who like medium to dark roasts or a more textured juicy shot. And for the price, it's got a lot of great and thoughtful features and the workflow is super solid. For people like me who like a sharper shot with more clarity, there are definitely better options on the market for similar prices. If this video helped you to make a decision about this very popular Kickstarter grinder, I'd really appreciate a like on this video and you guys letting me know in the comments what you think about it and whether you backed it on Kickstarter. It's always a big risk for creators like me to say it like I see it and point out issues with popular products. And remember that this is just my opinion about this grinder from my experience using it and you're more than welcome to disagree with me. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts about it, you wonderfully over-caffeinated people, and I'll see you on the next one.